Welcome back, folks. Lazy Sunday watching uh, Terminator 2 for like the hundredth time. Anyways, I haven't got on this season yet, and so I figured I'd get on. Um, the game was yesterday, so I don't have any rants in me. That's more of a live thing. Uh, first, let me address the trolls. I've had them coming out the woodworks. I mean, they're commenting on year and a half old videos. Am I still excited for Willie? Well, no, of course not. Right now? No, I'm not. Do I want him to get fired right now? No, but I'm teetering. <laughs> I'm close. He's making it awfully easy to jump on that bandwagon. And for those of you that want him fired, I, I can't really blame you. What am I going to tell you? No, grasp at this for hope. There's not much to grasp at. I just want to get on here and talk about uh, just the first three games. Not, not each game, but just as a whole, what the team is looking like. Uh, last night's heartbreaking loss. So I'll, as usual, I'll try to keep this short, but I always go longer than I want to. Okay, on the season, I just want to just go, go into segments of this team compared to last year's team. Uh, special teams, I think, is much improved. I remember during the course of last season, at least one to three times a game, I was yelling at the TV because the special teams was allowing a huge return or fucking up a punt or what have you. And I can't recall, at least through uh, these first three games, of really griping about the special teams at all. Guayo's done his thing. Uh, coverage has been good on punt and kickoffs uh, for the most part. Maybe there's been one or two returns that have leaked out to the 30 or so, but generally good. Tommy Martin's uh, subbed in for Logan Tyler because Tyler likes to party, apparently. Uh, Tommy Martin's done well. Had a great game last night. I think generally special teams is damn near taking a 180. I'd have to go look at the, uh, the stats on it uh, compared to the rest of the country, but that's like the general feeling. They're much better. Uh, the offense, I think you have to be blind not to realize that this offense is improved from last year. Is it a finished product? Hell, fuck no. Is it great? Is it elite? No. Um, it's, it's solid. It's, it's going to always be inconsistent because of our offensive line is what it is. The talent level on the line still isn't anywhere close to where it needs to be. Um, and, and if... You don't have to be, you know, a genius or an analyst or a former player to realize that the line is being better coached. Like, in just watching, yes, there's still some mistakes here and there, but compared to last year, it just looks like less of a clown show. Uh, I think that's a pretty, pretty easy thing to say for me. Is it, like I said, is it good? No, I think it's probably below average line right now, and compared to last year, when it, when it, which was probably a you know, 115th ranked line or something, one of the five worst in the entire FBS, a below average line would be quite the improvement. Uh, Blackman, uh, he, he's a little inconsistent because, again, he, his talent, he has so much of a ceiling. He's probably an above average to good quarterback. But he, at present, though, at least Bryles has him in position where he's top 10, I think, in yards against FBS opponents and touchdown passes. So he is doing some things well. I do think he's playing better than Francois. Uh, I think that's kind of an easy thing to say, but he's a little inconsistent as well. Sometimes his release is too much of a windup. Um, sometimes his footwork is, is bad. Uh, a perfect example was, is it the last drive or second to last drive uh, where Bryles schemed up McKitty wide open and his lead foot isn't anywhere close in, towards the direction of McKitty. And so it's an errant throw, and it's behind McKitty. But generally, I can't really complain about Blackman's play. Would have been nice to have that Terry touchdown pass last night. Akers is a beast. Uh, you know, Terry's had his moments. Some of the younger receivers have stepped up. I thought McKitty's, you know, uh, shown to be a little bit of a playmaker. Um, but in general, it's an improved offense from last year. But it'll always be inconsistent uh, because of the shitty O-line. I mean, it just is what it is. On to the defense. I think, you know, again, doesn't take a genius to realize we're horrible on defense. The entire defensive staff, save for maybe Odell, um, are incompetent. The, our players are, are being coached um, by an incompetent defensive staff. There's just no other way to put it because there's a lot of talent on that defense. Um, do we, we need some viable pass rushers, which, by the way, it sucks to lose Kando for I don't know how long after last night's injury. There are some missing ingredients on that defense, but there's enough talent not to look how they looked through the first two games and the fourth quarter of last night. 
It's people are constantly out of position. It, you know, it's the same shit we've seen. Um, I wasn't encouraged <laughs> about the three quarters of last night, which I'll talk about Virginia game in a second. But generally, yeah, the defense stinks. Marvin Wilson's a beast. We know that. But the linebackers still don't know when to trigger, still can't shed blocks, still can't drop into coverage properly. Um, and sometimes the, the, the uh, defensive backfield looks confused. And we're playing all this zone, which is a lot of fun to just play zone as much as they have. I don't know the answer. I'm not a fucking D coordinator. But it seems to me uh, we're just not that great at it. So that's kind of the, the, the 2019 team. Uh, very brief, rudimentary um, analysis there. <clears throat> it, it's better than last year's team. I mean, I, I hate to do this kind of basic comparison, but I think most of you agree would agree that the 2018 team would have went to Virginia last night and lost by 20. Now, there are no more victories. I'm not fucking happy to be one and two. You know, I'm not saying good job, Willie. He hasn't done a good job overall. He's six and nine during his tenure, all right? So, so far, the trolls, you guys are looking pretty good. Also, fuck you. And keep commenting. Uh, but it's an improved team. I, I don't know where we go from here. I, I don't, I still am, I'm not 100% convinced a bowl game will be made. Um, if the defense can play anywhere close to where it played or how it played in the first three quarters of last night's game, maybe you can go ahead and mark a bowl, day, bowl game down. But I, I think we, none of us can guarantee that's going to happen because now they're one and two and you're wondering how much longer will these kids continue to buy in and put in 100% effort. They lose next week versus Louisville and go one and three. Some of these kids are going to pack it the fuck in. There's been other people discuss this, like Jeff Cameron, and I completely agree. I mean, it's human nature, right? You're listening to everything your coaches fucking tell you, and this is more direct towards the defense. You're listening to everything your coaches tell you, and the results aren't coming, so why should you continue to believe? It's like if you're in class and your teacher's t teaching you, you know, this is how you solve this uh, equation, and you're listening to them, but you're still not getting the answer. So why am I going to keep listening to this stupid fucking teacher? <laughs> um... But we'll see going forward. I have zero expectations, just as I had coming into the season, which is partly the reason I didn't make a video until now, because what am I going to talk about? Oh, I, I believe we're going to do... I don't know. Uh, so let's go to the Virginia game. I'm not going to analyze the whole game. Uh, just mention that, again, first three quarters, the defense. I mean, uh, Cooper, Wilson, Durden, those guys were wrecking the interior of Virginia's offensive line. They played a fantastic fucking game. Um, I thought we looked mostly disciplined the first three quarters. I was just like watching it, and I think I tweeted out, like someone put an APB out for the 2019 de defense because this isn't them. We're actually getting stops. What? What's going on here? We're looking competent. And then, of course, the fourth quarter happened, and they allowed like 200 yards in one quarter and three touchdowns and committed four personal fouls. Now, generally, penalties don't bother me that much. I expect like, six, seven, or eight each game. I just expect it. Uh, and I think Bud Elliott has an article somewhere, or there's data somewhere, where it shows you penalties generally have a very low correlation to wins and losses. But personal fouls fucking drive me nuts because most of them are just so, a player being stupid. I, I can give Cooper a little bit of a break. I thought on that play when, when the defense penetrated and there was like three or four knolls around the play, I was like telling my friend, I was like, blow the whistle, blow the whistle, blow the whistle. Because, you know, you could... From the get-go, you're like, okay, this play is, is dead. But it's like they waited a little bit. It's like 1,001, 1,002. Blows the whistle just as Cooper is trying to bring the guy to the ground to finish the play. I thought that was a little slap dick. Um, some other things about the game. Oh, this is nothing new if you're an FSU fan. ACC refs are horrible. Not to say that we didn't get some calls our way, but my God. Virginia's O-line hold after hold after hold after hold that wasn't called in fucking sane. Um, just touch on a couple other things. Uh, I wish Akers would have got the ball more. I mean, I, I just don't get why he wasn't involved a little more, especially the last two drives, and that's what I'll go into. The second to last drive, I'm seeing on the timeline, a lot of people bitch about the pace. We went too fast, and then we gave him the ball with all this time left. All right, most of you know, I'm sure, pace is used to, you know, 
fuck up the defense, not let them get set and ready, and, you know, we'll catch them off guard. You know, just kind of the general reason for it. Okay, but some of you apparently don't know that it's also used to mask FSU's biggest deficiency, which is offensive line. This offensive line needs all the help it can fucking get, and that's what Pace does. It doesn't allow Virginia or whatever defense to get set. It doesn't allow opposing defenses to dial up exotic blitzes because of the Pace. Let's say they slow down on that second-to-last drive and still go three and out and pump the ball away to Virginia with, I don't know, three minutes to go. And then Virginia does what it does because our defense is folded at this point. They go down and score the go-ahead touchdown, and we get the ball back with, like, 40 seconds left because we slow down the pace. The pace is, you're going to see it all season. It's required for us to even have a shot on offense. About the only time you'll see it slow down is when we're up like two scores with like a couple minutes left. It's not going to slow down in a one point game on the road. It's just, that wasn't the time to slow it down. I'm sorry. My biggest bitch about that second to last drive was not giving acres the damn ball. And, of course, the last thing I'll touch on is the last play of the game. Miraculously, Blackman throws a dart for a first down inside the five. I forgot who the receiver was. Was it number 20? Was it Harrison? Anyways, he was stopped. Ford Progress impeded. He fell to the ground and tackled with about seven or eight seconds to remaining in the game. The clock continued to run, got down to four seconds, and that's when the ball was set and... By the time everyone was lined up and they snapped, it was like one second. You couldn't spike. Went to Cam Akers. He tried his best, but, you know, it was just a hurried-up play because they were panicked because there was only four seconds left. So, once again, fuck the ACC refs for not stopping the clock when the guy hit the ground. There should have been, at worst, six seconds left. And perhaps with six seconds left, our offense is a little less panicked they get up to the line, and they spike it. But we'll never know. Um, so, yeah, end in another loss, one and two, just like last year, just like the previous two seasons. So this is the third consecutive season starting one and two. But I think this team is better than last year's uh, team that started one and two team, which isn't to say it's good. Folks, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this team's good. I'm not saying Willie's done a great job by any stretch. But there are signs Signs of improvement. But if the progress continues to be this small, Willie's not going to be here long enough. Uh, and my dog's going crazy because of the Amazon guy. Anyways, Louisville next week. Like I said, go one and three, and some of these kids might pack it in. Hey, it's enough. All right, sorry. Anyways, Another heartbreaking loss. I don't really know where to go from her. I hope Jim Leavitt, the new analyst, essentially takes over. I know he's technically not supposed to call plays, but come on. Analysts around the country are doing more than they're probably prohibited or, or, or probably allowed to do, rather. So uh, I don't know how much effect he could have had uh, in being on the job for three days, but the first three quarters, it looked like a different defense. So who knows? Um, not much else to say. I mean, for now, you trolls keep trolling because – uh, well, if you're a guy that supported the Taggart hire at the beginning, which I did, and again, I'm not ready to fire him, but I'm close. Don't, trust me, I'm not going to blindly defend this fucker if uh, the, they miss two bowl games his first two seasons. Trust me. If that happens, oh, I will be on that bandwagon. But anyways, see how it goes. I'll be back on here. You know, maybe I'll do a you know, kind of in-game video. I know people like my ridiculous, stupid rants. <laughs> but until next time, talk to you later. Bye.